today the flagrano, the lima beans, and the soybeans go into the ground. Two. What did that say? Two? Two feet. Put that in. Mm. Two feet? Yep. Ew, two feet! It's a form of measurement. Can you put that in at three? Wait, how else? How I, I know. Do? It's just a measurement. Three. I'll explain it later. wonderful perennial vegetable to have it growing in your garden. One way to eat sea kale is to blanch it in the early parts of spring around February or March and when it's very pale green and it's grown about six inches or more you can go ahead and you can cut it and eat it. Another way to eat sea kale is to eat the florets that grow on it and they look just like broccoli florets. They're a little bit bitter compared to a broccoli floret, but there are ways to cook it to take some of that bitterness out. I've also heard of people eating the roots, which that's something I have not done, and some of the seeds as well. I have not done that either. But this is what sea kale looks like. So you can see, these are our two-year-old sea kale plants. These are the florets. They look very similar to broccoli florets and they can be eaten. If you don't eat them, the flowers are absolutely gorgeous. You'll have white flowers all over the sea kale growing and the bees absolutely adore it. It is a perfect, perfect pollinator plant, um, especially if you have a lot of flowers in your, in your garden bed. It's a great way to also have some edible landscaping so you can plant it like I've done in the flower bed in our front garden. And I find that the deer tend to not eat it. I don't know if it's because of the bitterness or not, but um, it does taste really good. When you blanch these stalks in the early spring, they do not taste bitter at all. They have a lovely tender taste, very similar to an asparagus. Um, not quite asparagus, but a little similar to that. But they're absolutely delicious. There's no bitterness whatsoever in those blanched stalks. The florets, however, are a bit bitter, like I said. This plant here is another one of our two-year-old plants. You can see here and here where we were taking cuttings of the blanched stalks to eat this past spring. Because we took cuttings of the blanched stalks, we will not allow these 
florets to flower on this particular set of plants. We will make sure that we cut all of the florets off and eat them before this flowers and goes to seed. This plant here, we did not blanch this spring, so we will eat some of these florets and eventually we'll go ahead and let them just flower. And I will save the seed as I do every year. When we save the seed, I start new sea kale plants. And they are spindly <laughs> little things. They have a hard, uh, you have to be very careful with them because they do grow very spindly. This is new from this year. This one is a new plant from this year and the one up there is new also from this year. Okay, so we're going to harvest some sea kale right now to bring inside to cook for dinner. There are three different ways that we have tried in the past to cook our vegetables that have a bit of a bitter flavor to them to take some of that bitterness out. The first way is to blanch the vegetables first and then we usually will braise them. The second way is to add some spice or some sweet to the vegetables. So spice would be adding lots of garlic or some sweet like some sugar or some honey to kind of cut out that bitter flavor. And the third way that you can try to uh, take out some of that bitter is to add acid. So you could add a little bit of lemon juice and keep tasting until you have the flavor that you desire.